Right, what is RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation? And how is it different from search? Well, the key difference is search is predominantly keyword based, whereas RAG searches for semantically similar text. And what that means is that it can understand a bit more about exactly what you mean when you write certain phrases rather than just trying to pull out keywords to search. I'll take you through what RAG is by looking at a few different parts of RAG from ingesting data, vector databases, querying data, and then generating a response to queries. Some reasons why you might consider using RAG in your services are things like for chatbots that, that use additional context to answer questions based on your data or updating data, for improving search, so you might have seen how Google now includes a summary at the top rather than just giving you links. Also for content generation, if you're looking to generate posts or blogs and you want to make sure that it includes relevant information from your company data, then you can use it for that as well. So let's start from the end, how is it going to be used? And then we'll look in a bit more detail about how you ingest data and how a VEX database fits into the problem. So say that you've got some query that you're looking for. What RAG does is it will go away and look against your database full of your own documents your, or any other text that you've ingested. And it will then pull back the most similar chunks of text based on their semantic similarity. It will rank them based on how similar they are to, and it will only retrieve the amount that you want. So if you're looking for the top most similar two documents, then you can only retrieve those. Once it's retrieved those documents, what normally happens is those documents are then fed into a language model like GPT-40 or Mistral, and the language model will then use that data to generate a response along with your original query. We'll now dig into a few more parts of that, such as ingesting the data into your vector database, because this already assumes that you've got that data there to search against. So when we're ingesting data, what happens is first your documents that you want to ingest, they're split up into what are called chunks. And these chunks could be things like paragraphs or parts of paragraphs, depending on how you decided to chunk the data up. Each one of these chunks is then fed into an embedding model. An embedding is just a long vector, which is representative of the content of that paragraph. And the useful thing about these vectors is that when you compare the vectors, the closer they are together, the more similar the two texts are. These vectors are then stored in a vector database along with the original text that was used to create them through the embedding model. The embedding model that you choose is completely up to you. You can use an embedding model from a large provider like GPT-40, or you can use an open source embedding model from Hug Hugging Face. It depends on how you set up your service as well. If you're using an off the shelf service like Pinecone to perform your RAG search, then they will already come with an embedding model baked into the, the search. But if you're setting up yourself or using open source tools, then you'll most likely have to choose this embedding model uh, and you can use things like Hugging Face leaderboards to do that. Let's have a closer look at this vector database and understand what's going on there. So in your vector database, we've already got these embedding vectors that have been generated from each of your paragraphs and they're stored with both the text content and also with any other additional metadata that's associated. And that metadata could be things like the name of the PDF, where in the PDF it's located, when the data was ingested so you know how old that text chunk is or any other information that you want to associate with that text and use either to provide more context to the language model during the generation or just use to provide a reference to the user about where it's come from. So this is what your vector data database looks like and there's quite a few different providers of this out there and most of the cloud providers they have their own vector database. Postgres it has its own vector database add-on and there's some other providers like Milvus and Chroma DB has just released a distributed vector database that's open source as well. So we've got our vector database. How, how does the querying work in a bit more detail? Let's have a look. You take your query text that comes in. This could be the question that the users asked of your chatbot, or it could be the text that you're searching for in your RAG search. We then put that query text through an embedding model and generate a new vector that's representative of that query. We can then compare that new vector against the vector database 
with a, and get a similarity score for each vector that's stored in the vector database. This similarity score, the lower it is, the closer those two vectors are and the closer the two texts are in meaning. We can then rank the output. In this example, we've only got two vectors in our vector database and they've been ranked. So the most similar one is the top one. And then it will return the amount of top results that you've asked for. In this case, we've only asked for one. And that text will be the most similar. Then we can put that into our language model combined with the original query and the language model can use that information to answer your question. So that's fundamentally what RAG is. And there are four key parts of your RAG system. There's your chunker, which is responsible for taking your input text and separating out into paragraphs or splitting it on punctuation, however you choose to do it. There's your embedding model, which is what converts your paragraphs into vectors. Your vector database, which is just storing those vectors alongside the original text so that you can query it. And then there's your generator as well, which is your language model that is taking the query, taking the paragraph that it's been retrieved from the vector database and then formulating that into a final answer for the user. That's it. We've discussed what RAG is and the key component parts of it and tried to use some visual slides to explain it. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and as it will motivate me to do more. If you've got any other topics in RAG that you'd like me to dive into further, then just let me know and I'll get onto it. Thanks for watching.